this week on the Hoover Boys. Well, I'm an idiot. First off, let me say happy Father's Day to all you amazing fathers out there. I hope you had an awesome weekend. It's a little bright out here. I want to tell you guys how my Father's Day weekend went. It was great. It was awesome. Saturday, we met up, went metal detecting with Mark, Gary, and Brad. Yes, Brad came out for a fun-filled day. Of course, Brad found multiple silver coins as well as Mark. It was a great day. I get home late Saturday night. I set my alarm for early the next morning to go crabbing with my brother so we can surprise our father with crabs on Father's Day. It was beautiful. We went over to my brother's house, had a crab feast, had some fish tacos. It was an amazing Father's Day. The next morning, Monday, my son Seamus asked if he could go snakehead fishing, which he's never caught before. If you're familiar with our other channel, Mental Health Day, you know the fish that I'm talking about. Me being me, I was excited about making a fishing video with my boy. I do what I always do before I cut an intro, which is format my SD card, which erases everything on it. All the running and gunning this weekend, I never downloaded the footage from the metal detecting hunt we had on Saturday. Long story short, I'm an idiot. Now today I'm scrambling to put something together for some sort of episode. I do have all the close-up shots and the wrap-up on my other camera, so I'm going to do my best to narrate our hunt on Saturday. Um, this, this goof hurts the most because we haven't seen Brad in months, and who knows when we're going to see him again. He is a busy father as well. Uh, so we start off at the same place that we filmed our last couple episodes, where Mark dug his two reals, and I found my snake buckle. And Mark being Mark, he starts off how he usually does. He digs a pewter spoon bowl, a pewter button, and a brass button. Bang, bang, bang. I do have a shot of bread. He uh, handed me this token before he went to eat some food. What are you doing? Where are you going? I'm trying to get some food. <laughs> I'm just He's just handed me this. Got himself a little picker's token of some sort. The A on this side, and there's a three on this side. Something in company, CM maybe. I don't know. Definitely cool. Thank Much you. better than my weedy. Yes. Good job, buddy. I had one of my off days. Um, I found a few things, but my main thing for this day was I was the camera guy, and as you can see, I messed that up. Um, I did dig a very sweet nipple lead button with a huge shank. Here's a shot of that. I'm trying to keep you guys out of the wind. Look at the shank on that joker. Lead button. Lead nipple button. Definitely a cool button. Early, early stuff right there. There was one point where Mark, Brad, and I were like way down in the cove, dipped around the corner. We couldn't see Gary, and he just starts freaking out, like loud freaking out. So we all look at each other with the same faces with the same thought in our mind Gary just dug a gold coin so we started like bum rushing the beach trying to get up there there's this great shot of like me and Brad like running up the beach and uh, it wasn't a gold coin but it is really awesome <laughs> I can definitely see how Gary was freaking out this thing is awesome check out that pipe bowl absolutely beautiful and complete looks like they would just stick a stem in there and keep on using it that is too cool definitely sweet to just pop up in your scoop like that brad was on this weird little token tear if you want to say he digs another token that we've never seen before it's pretty cool check this out this is definitely cool and different can't say i've ever seen one before it says medal of honor and then it says primary judges medal of honor award same thing on both sides just easier to read this side it's definitely a cool token and I looked them up and all I can find on the age is that it's vintage and you can buy them on eBay for like two to four dollars. Um, Mark dug a beautiful piece to an open work shoe buckle. That thing was lead. That thing was absolutely beautiful. Other than that, the targets at this site started getting a little thin so we decided to do some exploring on the river. 
The rest of the day we're more or less just hopping from site to site to site trying to find another honey hole. We landed in front of this amazing farmhouse with trees bigger around than a truck. And uh, the owner was curious, obviously. He came down and talked to us. And the place is built in the late 1600s. Unfortunately, the bottom was super mucky there, which is almost impossible to metal detect. I uh, did end up getting a coin signal and this came out. Well, judging how we've seen other coins come out of this river, this very well could have been a copper coin that was holed into a washer or something. But, whew, if it was, seen better days. Signals were pretty few and far between out in front of this place because of the muck. Other than that, there was a button or two found, and Mark dug half of a powder flask. There's a close-up of Mark's powder flask. That thing is awesome. A little rabbit on there. Definitely cool. It would been cool if it was complete and had the, the tip, but that's still pretty awesome. This 1600s farm had a few hundred acres of shorefront property. So we tried multiple places all the way around it, trying to find a proper bottom to dig that actually had some old targets in it. Unfortunately, we never found it. So the next stop we landed, Brad pretty much jumped out of the boat and dug a silver right off the bat. Well, if you saw last week's episode, the wrap up, I told you Brad was gonna come out here and find a silver coin in this river. And well, I didn't lie. I was definitely expecting it to be older than a silver rosy dime. It's a 1950-something, six, eight, something like that. But Brad found shiny. I came over to see his silver dime and ended up like bottom feeding a wheat scent or something like that. And then in Brad fashion, Brad digs another silver. This one, a little bit bigger. Well, now Brad's found bigger shiny, 1940 silver quarter. Uh, it's seen better days, but silver is silver, as they say. And now Brad has two of them. Imagine that. Where we parked the boat seemed to be like a lot of stuff from that like mid 1900s. Mark dug a great seal cuff button from World War II. Brad had the one up him and he dug a great seal coat button and a great seal cuff button. I think all I have a picture of is the great seal coat button though, but you get the idea. Mark ends up making his way around the bend, around towards the point, and uh, I'm still bottom feeding the silvers, digging wheat scents. And out of nowhere, Mark starts making noise, which he doesn't normally do. And then he gives us the sign for big and shiny. And then he tells us it's way older than Brad's. So Brad and I start storming the water and to see the reveal. And it's just, I know that it would have been a great shot of, you know, the reveal of this coin. Because these don't come up often. It sucks losing footage like this. Did I mention that I'm an idiot? Either way, this is what he found. Well, there it is. Find of the day. So far, at least. I'm sure it'll hold up. 1876, Seated Liberty Quarter. Centennial, Seated Liberty Quarter. Somebody was pissed when they lost that. It definitely was lost in really nice condition. Coin still has some very good details for being in the salt water. Sorry for the uh, rockiness. It's a bit windy where we are right now. That is awesome. Beautiful quarter, congratulations, Muck. So I ended up getting an 18 signal pretty close to where the quarter came out. So I'm thinking, sweet, there's an Indian head scent here. Maybe this is a coin spill. I flip out a beautiful fishing sinker. While I'm flipping out the beautiful fishing sinker, live action, Mark flips out another silver. This time, it's a dime. Just like that, now the muck has two silvers, a silver quarter and a silver dime, just like B-Rad. This might be a different drop. This is 1905, though stranger things have happened. Definitely not out of the ordinary for coins 30 years apart to have been found in the same drop, but he got himself a Barbie dime. Does not look like there's a mint on this either. Did not see one on the quarter, but couldn't tell. Either way, Mark's got himself a Barbie dime. Pretty awesome. So with a few nice silvers that came out of this site, we worked this site for a few hours, but nothing else great came to the party. So onward we went, we stopped at a good looking house from like the mid to late 1800s, and we dug a whole bunch of fishing lures and fishing sinkers. Then out of nowhere, Brad pops an Indian right out in front of the boat. Well, believe it or not, <laughs> that used to be an Indian head scent. Definitely isn't on a stable in there. 
It's just uh, very thin, but it's good to see one. You are watching the Hoover Boys. Of course, with the Indian coming to the party, we worked this site for a while. Not much came up. Working back to the boat, Mark digs a nice two-piece button. This one ends up being from the Civil War. It's a beautiful general service eagle button. At this point, it was getting kind of later in the day, so we ended up making our last stop, which is another beautiful old colonial. And this place had the perfect stone bottom. Unfortunately, these people used the river as a trash can. Right before we were about to like pack up and leave, Mark finds a goodie right behind the boat. Well, we've been hopping around from site to site to site all day. And uh, we're at our last place. We're packing on the boat now. But of course, Mark just found a copper right behind the boat. That's where they keep them all. You didn't know that? That's where they keep them? There's a hold one? Uh-huh. Shot. Look at the other side. You can see where the bullet went through it. Eh, it ain't shot. It ain't you, can't, shot. you can't shoot through a coin. Why not? I don't know. It looks like a 22 round. You got a... Is it U.S.? Classic head or matron? I don't know. I probably should have looked at it before I whipped the camera out. Yeah. I can't figure it out. We'll definitely see it in the wrap-up, I'm sure. Definitely looks U.S. Okay, it goes like that. Probably a matron if I had to get that. Eh, it might be a classic, classic head. head. Kind of looks like her doom, doesn't it? Yeah, I can see like the Liberty right there. Right. So, awesome. Very good. Right on. Another old coin out of this river for you. Good job. <laughs> Eat your lunch. <laughs> Eat your lunch for dinner. Um... Yeah, apparently I used up all my luck last week because I was just a cameraman today. We're going to go over what these guys found. They found some goodies. Quick little peek at this. Trash bucket. Definitely cleaned up the river again today. You got some overflows and fishing stuff and clock guts and some of uh, Gary's other things and a bunch of Muck's other things. Oh, including his powder flask. That's awesome. But uh, I guess we'll start with me. This pretty much, that was my day. <laughs> okay, you're done. Next. <laughs> Looks like a little, uh, yeah. Plunger. Toilet plunger. <laughs> <laughs> my stuff, got a buckle, watch back to get a little musket ball. Four Wheaties, some little pieces of stuff and things. I got a back of a two piece. Two really nice lead buttons. Got a nipple lead button with a huge shank like that. May have been a copper other than that some some boat spikes and a modern key uh be red new york did you say new york on there yeah new york and something something that's cool a little barrel tap you got some some spikes and big spoon bowl yep that's that early stuff and you got the uh ww2 buttons you got a couple lead buttons that there's a big dandy button a little bit of taco money yep another lead button and is that your yeah, Indian? Indian picker's check? It's two modern silvers, the rosy dime, the, the quarter, and his medal of honor. Very good. Uh, Gary got that cool, really nice pipe stem or pipe bowl, and he got some buttons. And actually, that there's a little fatty Indian, but it's really tough to see. Yep, nothing on any of the buttons, unfortunately. Fortunately, there's something on that. Nah, it's, eight. it's not. <laughs> there's an eight on there. <laughs> an eight. Uh -huh. What's the, what's this there, Mark? You got a applicator I there? Do, I do believe. <laughs> Medicine applicator. Yes. Big spoon bowl. It's Whatever. Hygiene, right? Yeah. Whatever that thing was. <laughs> Another little spoon bowl. <laughs> um, maybe a drawer pull. He got some some buttons. One WW two. One possible Civil War. Maybe a little post. You got some lead buttons. Big piece of shoe buckle frame. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> you gonna eat that? No. Here's his uh, classic head. It's got the whack through it. Actually, is it a classic head? Yeah, I do believe it's a classic, it's head. classic head. No, it's a matron. It's a matron. It's got a bullet. It's hole. matronized. <laughs> you get 22 rip through that thing. Just a copper slug. And uh, what's this? Weedy. <laughs> and he got bang bang silvers, the little barber dime, and the. The Sea of Liberty quarter that is not showing up very well right now. Bet a little side light would help that just for fun. Mm, it's not really helping it either, but it was an awesome find. Good day, definitely awesome to see you out here again. Be red, it's really amazing to be out for a minute. 
We missed you. Everybody missed you. I've seen a few months. <laughs> I hope not. I'm in for real. <laughs> and Billy's right now, he's injured. He wants to get out here, but he can't really get in the water right now. He's fine, but, you know, he's just dealing with his things. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, help clean up the ground, dig it all, and take your trash with you. Why? Because all holes matter. You said it. <laughs> that, that shocked me more than anything. <laughs> oh, why am I looking on my side of the board? Yeah, <laughs> I do. I mean, no, oh, my toilet plunger. Oh, you landed on my silver. <laughs>